After the Battle of Jakku and the signing of the Galactic Concordance, the Empire was disbanded and those still loyal to Emperor Palpatine's ideals fled into the Unknown Regions. Three decades later, they re-emerged as the First Order with Starkiller Base, a planet-destroying superweapon built within a planet itself. So what made this planet so special? And how did the First Order come across it? The book Star Wars Complete Locations provides us with some interesting new information. The planet that would eventually become Starkiller Base was actually known by the Empire for decades. Located in the Unknown Regions, it was near a similar ice planet known as Ilum, which was where Jedi younglings would retrieve kyber crystals for their first lightsabers. The Empire traveled to Ilum shortly after the execution of Order 66 and ravaged the planet mining crystals so deep that its core was exposed in some areas. It's possible, although never explicitly confirmed anywhere, that Starkiller Base could have actually been Ilum, but at the very least it seems to be somewhat of a sister planet located in the same region of space. What we know for sure is that Starkiller Base housed kyber crystals, and the Empire harvested them for use in both Death Star's super lasers. This may or may not throw a wrench in my theory that Jeddah will be the source for the Death Star's kyber crystals, but we do know that there were multiple crystal-filled planets throughout the galaxy, and the Empire likely mined as many as they knew about. We know for sure that they harvested crystals from Ilum, and even Lothal from Star Wars Rebels was said to have crystal formations under its surface. Anyway, back to Starkiller Base. Before the founders of the First Order fled into the Unknown Regions, they stole research logs from secret Imperial labs that held the location of the hidden planet, which could be seen as another connection between Ilum and Starkiller Base, since we know the Empire knew where Ilum was. Not only did the logs reveal the location of the planet, but they also had preliminary experimental information on dark energy and the technology needed to create a weapon on Starkiller's scale. Snowtrooper scouts were sent to the planet to dispose of any life that could oppose their occupation, and the First Order moved in to begin converting the planet. The Empire's legacy can truly be seen surrounding Starkiller Base, especially that of Grand Moff Tarkin. A weapon on this scale perfectly aligns with the Tarkin Doctrine, and the TIE Fighter Wing assigned to protect the base was even named Tarkin's Revenge. The First Order in general held the man in high esteem, and Agent Terex even used Tarkin's personal yacht, the Carrion Spike, on his own missions. The destruction of Starkiller Base was a major blow to the First Order, but it's possible we could see its legacy carried on into the future. Before turning the entire planet into a weapon, the kyber crystals inside were mined for other as-of-yet unknown weapons. This could suggest more super weapons, or maybe kyber-powered weapons on a smaller scale. Or it could just be a throwaway line in a reference book that will never appear again. It's also possible Kylo Ren got his cracked kyber crystal there, but that's pure speculation on my part. That's it for today. Please subscribe, like, and share to see new Star Wars videos every weekday. And if there's a specific Star Wars topic you'd like me to cover, Leave it in the comments and I'll do an episode about it. As always, thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you.